The great search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada is a power of engineer and help you. Yes, you find the things that you want on DigiKey.com. Lady Ada, what are you looking for this week? Okay, so let's go to the overhead because I'll show what I'm going to chat about. So on the desk of Lady Ada this week, I took apart this adorable Chicken McNugget um, themed Tetris toy game. We kind of looked at what's going on inside. Um, one thing I noticed is that to make its uh, BB blops, it uses a uh, piezo disc buzzer element. And we've talked about and uh, searched for buzzer elements before on um, the Great Search. So let me go to the blog and uh, Great Search. Yeah, go to the computer. Sorry. Don't forget, you can only see all the previous uh, great searches. Um, look at the blog. Um, so, yes, many years ago, November 12, 24, 2020. Oh, what a time. Um, piezo and magnetic buzzers. So for a lot of our um, boards, like the Circuit Playground and like the, the Clue and the Magtag, and basically the time, or the Macro Pad, whenever we ha have something that needs to make little, little tones, um, not very loud tones, but like little quiet, you know, just alerts. Uh, I like to use um, magnetic buzzers. And so this is a magnetic buzzer. Um, and they have lots in stock, which is great. So this is kind of the magnetic buzzers I make. My go-to, 7 millimeters by 7 millimeters square. And you give it um, about 3.6 volts uh, waveforms. And, you know, it can make a slightly better sounding than beeps. I mean, the, the trade-off is... It's not a piezo element. A piezo element is like two discs um, separated by this piezo crystal. And when voltage goes across it, AC voltage goes across it, it vibrates. Whereas inside here is actually um, a floating magnetic disc, like a, like a diaphragm. And then there's a coil. It's like a 16 ohm coil or 32 ohm coil. And when the coil uh, has... AC voltage going through it or current going through it, it um, lifts and raises the magnet just like a normal speaker. Um, so it's like a little miniature speaker speaker like with the magnetic. So you need fairly a good amount of current um, going through, but the trade-off is, uh, first off, these are pick and placeable, whereas piezos are not pick and placeable. Um, you need to have wire solder to them. So you, if you saw, um, if you go back to the overhead real fast, I'll show. Um, this, you know, sometimes there's a spring, but um, oftentimes there's wire soldered into one part and the other part of the piezo disc. And then in between, there is the, the crystal. So this is the flat disc, which is what ends up vibrating. And then there's the thin crystal and then a conductive layer put on top, um, which is what these two wires are soldered to. And then again, in, in between is a um, dielectric of piezo material. So this is not this is a, a capacitor whereas um the magnetic buzzer is an inductor so it changes how you drive it um with a capacitive drive you're going to want to have you know a differential um drive that can handle uh high capacitance with the um magnetic buzzer you're going to want something that's you know i use a, a very small class d amplifier but you'll want like a true class a or class a b amplifier that pushes dc current through not ac um okay so uh and does and doesn't have a bias across it which this of course you can have a, you can have a bias it's fine all right so let's go back to the computer okay so this is a magnetic buzzer again you know i use them but the trade-off is they're not particularly loud um you know they do um make a fair bit of noise and you can pick and place them which is what i like but they're also going to be more expensive than a uh piezo transducer so let's look at piezos and it's not surprising that this toy company that made the tetris toy they made like a half million of these and every penny counts like you want it to be as inexpensive as possible and you don't have to have very good resolution um but you do want to have it be kind of loud so you can hear it whereas our little buzzers are not very loud so um don't forget that piezos can be used both as um voltage to like ac voltage to sound but they can also detect vibration in and turn it into um, a voltage for sensing. So uh, vibration sensors 
are also piezos, but you want the kind that are like these large discs, which looks just like the thing that we were just checking out. Okay, so let's also look at only look at active ones to start. Um, they're sometimes called piezo benders because again they they bend and flex as the voltage goes across them. And yeah, there's these start to look pretty good. So we're not gonna look for the exact one. What we want is actually just the least expensive one available. So let's let's say we're you know we're gonna look at at least five thousand pieces. Um, let's look for ones that are normally stocking and not marketplace. Okay, so you know as you can see, they get pretty inexpensive. Uh, Fifteen cents. Um, it's a lot cheaper than the 80 cents for the magnetic buzzer. Um, Murata makes a lot of these. Looks like Ola Wolf is another company. Um, this one, that's kind of interesting little, oh, it looks like there's a feedback. So you can, you can read the feedback, which can help you adjust, um, the frequency, the resonant frequency of your piezo. But most of them look just like this, you know, very simple, um, element. You know, you can see they usually don't even have data sheets because, um, they're like, hi, it's just a piezo. There's usually a resonant frequency. Um, and that's like where they're going to be the loudest. And that's based on the size and, and the thickness of the material. Um, with these, you know, they, they have a uh, impedance and the max input voltage, but, um, again, we're running it off of a couple of AA batteries, so we don't have to worry about uh, hitting the maximum. The frequency, the resonant frequency, it's going to be, you know, it's not like they don't make noise at other frequencies, but that you're going to hear like a louder squeak at, um, you know, this eight kilohertz or 3.6 kilohertz. You know, again, it's meant for like uh, your multimeter, you know, it beeps when you do conductivity testing or your uh, some, a simple alarm clock, not meant for really making uh, very musical tones. For this Tetris toy, it works out okay because you're kind of playing dee, 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 dee. It's not a very symphonic sound. You're looking for just a very basic um, beep when it you press the buttons. It's a, a feedback element. Uh, so the next thing is, is that, uh, you know, we want wire terminals. Um, one thing is, you know, springs are kind of interesting. Let's just look at the springs. Um, there are ones that, you know, it's a disc and on your PCB, I've seen this actually on multimeters, you take them apart and instead of wires, because they want, you know, they have a different manufacturability. They, to make it inexpensive, instead of soldering wires, the piezo, they have springs that come out of the PCB. And I think the springs are pick and placeable. And then the springs touch the piezo and the two contact points. And that's how they, they make contact. I think the, um, so far when I've taken the multimeter apart, that's how that works. But we want with wire leads. So let's check it out. Uh, so wire leads, you know, none of these are going to be, oh, we want the standard style. We don't really care for feedback. It's a little bit less expensive that way. Different diameters are available. Um, looks like a couple of ones are available. These Murata ones look good. PUI Audio. I mean, they're going to be very generic. And yeah, they're going to be, you know, 40 cents. With wire leads, it's nice. You get to skip one step. You can just solder these in or use terminal blocks and you're good to go. Uh, so I think uh, this one's not in stock. So let's go with this one, you know, in quantity, 40 cents, got the wire leads. Oh, they're even tinned. So like even one less step you have to do, um, easy to integrate. You will want to have something holding up the disc. So usually, um, and you can't of course glue the whole thing because you have to let it resonate within the cavity. So, um, if you go to the overhead again, the way this tends to be done is if you look here this is a plastic it's a you know a soft you know abs plastic enclosure and then these are little heat stakes um there's little um parts that are molded in um and there's a little like a like a hot stamp that comes down you place the uh piezo in and there were these little um fingers and then the three-pronged heat presser Majig came down and heated up the plastic and then molded it in place so that this 
This has nothing underneath it, but it's held in place by these um, three fingers. So you'll want to do something like that. Or you'll have a you know a cavity with like a little ridge on it so that this can freely vibrate um, within your enclosure. So this is my pick. We can go back to the computer. The Murata ZB 7Z, sorry, the Murata 7BB series comes at a bunch of different uh, diameters. I picked the the larger it is, uh, the louder it's going to be. Basically, well, this little one is going to make a good amount of sound. Uh, and then uh, don't forget, you'll need um, something to drive it. You'll need a good AC driver for that impedance. 300 ohms is, um, you know, you'll need something, not a microcontroller pin, if you want to get the good amount of sound. And a differential drive, like an H-bridge drive, will also get you um, the best audio output. So that's so my pick if you want to add some beeps and boops. Is there research? 